Allah. Peace and power to the tribe, man. I'm just surfing the wave, man. Just wanted to get a get a part two in, you know what I mean, before we move on to press the jive, get back, man. I mean, this investigation is 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 getting so exciting, you know what I mean? And uh no more time is is seeking Hawa and our Khan, Dawi, Dawu, you know what I'm saying? So important because we you're talking about the function, you know, the guidance right here in this earth realm, you know, then then that anointed being connected with Hawa, man, that that creates a sound that Hawa can always hear the frequency of Dawi, Psalms 18, you know what I mean? So we're gonna dig, you know, go back in Samuel, you know what I mean? Just just have a great time digging with that, connecting to the Rechabites, back to the Raja, Raja, Raja Cholas the second, getting the Cholas, the Panians, get into the uh, stories of, of Parsival and Totoro and all those other scholastic sources, get back in the press of John, the legend and the sources, left the Aqua Top Battle, you know what I mean? Get back in the Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. Connect that with the Forbidden Histories of America. I mean, we're going to surf the way with the Priest King. Did a black man discover the fountain of youth? Who got the drop? Who got the drop? Who got the drop, man? So we about to get, you know, real investigative over here, man. You know, fall back. You know what I mean? Be a fly on the wall unless you got something great to say about this investigation. Because right now we're talking about investigating yourself. And it's a frequency war. This the new art of war, y'all. Cyborg insects, entomological warfare. Remember, entomology, right? Entomology. The study of insects. Now, when you create warfare with it, right? The new art of war. Hey. Now, we got a great uh, document last time. We're going to get some more of that. You know what I mean? Just digging on some of the history of entomological war using insects. I mean, but really, you can go way back to the biblical plague. <laughs> if you look at it that way, a while has been plaguing with insects. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that's some of the oldest form of war is using insects. And of course, they want to play God, right? Like they want to play like they're the creator. So now they want to control insects the way the creator controls insects, man. You know what I mean? And that's that's where the shit goes south. That's where the shit goes south. So it says in a recent episode of FX's hit TV drama, The Americans, the plot line hinged on what I thought was a fictionalized tale of espionage utilizing insects as armed soldiers of sorts. It followed that the lead character, Elizabeth and Philip Jennings, in their attempt to foil an American plot against the Russians, disease spreading midges midges resembling mosquitoes were being bred to destroy the soviet's wheat supply to escalate the country's hunger crisis definitely a unique spy story premise but can any of this be true all right so we know they're putting it all out on the on the tube before they do it now with a little research i quickly learned the americans was based on actual history entomological warfare is a type of biological military operation which relies on insects to attack one's enemies. The concept is not new. It has existed for centuries, dating as far back as the Black Death of the 14th century. Right? You got the Black Plague, got all that popping off in Europe. The plague spread over Europe may have been the result of a biological attack of fleas on the Crimean, Crimean city of Kaffa, according to some historians historian theorists during the cold war the u.s was indeed accused of entomological warfare against the russians there were a number of accusations made by the cubans that the u.s used insects to spread dengue or dengue fever on the whole bunch of of crop pests now we just got you know back in this document that we're gonna get some more of you know what i mean right here just digging on entomological war you know what I mean? And in this, they were just talking the same thing with uh, with Roosevelt, some other type of stuff. So, you know, we're going to back up in this and kind of take our time with it so we can just kind of get some of the history behind it. This is Franklin uh, Roosevelt. Let me get this started a research and development program. All right, this is 1943. 
Franklin Roosevelt deviated from the Fox Doctrine, which came from a report drafted in 1932 suggesting the U.S. refrain from any development of biological weapons and started a research development camp at Camp Detrick. So he deviated from the Fox Doctrine. We might have to dig on this Fox Doctrine, man, all right? Because this apparently was so that they would not be tripping with this, you know what I'm saying, insect warfare, you know what I mean? But then he deviated from that. And then he set up pro, he set up shop at Cat Detrick. You know I mean, and they started uh, you know doing their biological weapons. It's as a result, the Camp Detrick operation grew and eventually would include 245 structures with over 5,000 workers. So <laughs> let's go back because we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this. Oh yeah. Okay. So okay. So during. The Cold War, the U.S. was indeed accused of entomological warfare. Well, yeah, they had a whole camp set up, Camp Detrick, right? There were accusations that made by the Cubans that the U.S. used insects to spread ding, dingo fever on a whole bunch of crop pests. So they used the insects to destroy the agriculture, just like they did us, just like they're doing us. Now we got the GMO and now we got the bullshit, Monsanto, Soros, all this stuff. It's all what they this is the this is how they flow. This is the witchcraft, right? So we dig on this not to say, oh, okay, uh uh you're so wicked, you're so wicked. I mean, we get it. It's a broken record. You know, we got wickedness, you know what I'm saying? The whole point of this redemption right now is to know that the wickedness on us is brought to us by us, and we can cure ourselves. And in curing what's inside of us, we'll be curing what's outside of us, man. We'll be putting everything in order. So you got the powwow right now. The power's in your hand, man. The ball's in our court right now. You can move around easier, you know what I'm saying? Even with this rent thing, with the quarantine, this the only time I ever know that you can literally keep your place because they can't do no eviction. <laughs> so you can keep your place if you're renting while, you know, using that, you know, extra that you would be doing the rent to, you know, get yourself in another situation. You know what I'm saying? So, and you got very low rents in certain areas, you know what I'm saying? Outside the grid a little bit. So, you know, you can, you know, really, you know, save at least half on just being outside the grid and paying lower rent anyway. But if you were, you know, stuck on this rent, so we'll see how this all unfolds, but you know, this is like a smooth little get out, smooth little getaway, man. We're, you know what I'm saying? You got a little money that might be freed up from, you know, not being obligated to necessarily pay rent or mortgage or or that type of thing that you can apply to something else real slick like that. You know what I mean? And still be able to, you know, keep your current situation and work and work through that. So I don't know another time that you can really kind of move around as easy, really, as you can. You know what I mean? Um, it's really the power is in your hands, man. You know what I'm saying? To make things happen, to create a reality. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep stepping forward, man. Definitely get at us. Choose up at 432thedrop.com. You know what I mean? To, you know, uh, put any energy forward to, uh, you know, ideas and, and strategy and flow, you know, or or just, you know, wanting to assist, man, and, and all that. So just get at us. Choose up at 432thedrop.com or hit me up. Music at 432thedrop.com. And uh, if you can't ever find me there, if something ever happens to this domain and, and you know, whatever the case, I still got my Gmail, 432thedrop at gmail.com. And other than that, man, catch me in the ether, man. Catch me in the ether, man. Let's go. Wow, all right. Six-legged soldiers using insects as war. However, these allegations were mainly live during the 1960s. Well... We know that as early back as the, what is it, the 40s, 1943, Roosevelt already popped it off. They already had a whole camp set up. They already had a whole camp set up, a whole operation, 245 structures. Uh, U.S. researchers experimented with fruit flies and screw worms to determine their ability to destroy agriculture. <laughs> so they're being accused 10 years later, all right? They're being accused 10 years later of doing something to the agriculture in Cuba when they already had a whole operation, 245 structures, 5,000 workers already set up, my knock, already set up. So you see, this is all play play.
It's all play play. It's all a game. 1960s. Now they had an issue with their crops, right? Cuba had an issue with the crops. They said, come on, y'all put insects and destroyed our crops. Over time, reliance on raising real insects to do a country's dirty work was found to be costly. It required large laboratories and an army of research technicians to keep these large scale programs ongoing. Plus, insects were limited to crop infestation. If countries wanted to use insects for alternate military action, they needed to think outside the box. This prompted scientists to try and piggyback on evolution by building part animal, part machine cyborgs. Just like they have with the people, right? Just like they got with the people, right? Just like they got with the people, right? I mean, and they have to all y'all surfing the wave, man, in part one. You know what I mean? Y'all showing up. Y'all showing up, man. You know what I'm saying? We've been surfing the wave. And, uh, you know, y'all been leaving great comments, man. Just check out a few right quick. Let's check out a few of these, man. All right, love to Lily of God, 2003. She said, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real by Dr. Phil Valentine. Love to the bro. He did a two-hour lecture on Corona. It was mind-blowing and very evil. Shaking my damn head. Ancestors turn this virus back on them all, man. Hawa, hawa, our creators in control, my sister. La hawa, Israel Sharp. What it do, big bro? I appreciate you, man. He said, big bro. Big bro drop, not playing. The whole damn nation ain't playing with these heathens. You either ether up, Kai, with this wave or stay spraying your damn self with whatever getting microwave. But, a hey, Hawaii, nine, ever, man. That's that noon right there. Ahab, Israel. Ahab to uh, James Day. He said, maybe we about to level up with the comet that, that passing by this month. So they trying to combat it. Just thinking, yeah, you know, these comments is coming in, right? Where do you know these comments are stars with a tail, right? So a lot of these, you know, comments are cold word for dragons coming in. And let's see what happens, man. Let's see how our Jacons, Quam, can you dig it? Love to uh, James Day. Love to Brian McClure, man. Nine spiral up. He said, great drop, Con. Can't help but think they're still going to try to, they're still going to pull off this fake alien invasion called Blue Brain. Yeah, I mean, you know, they... They didn't set the world stage up. Now we just got to observe, my bro. Hey, hi. Uh, Victor Mack, what it do? He said, nation, the CDC, pneumonia and influence and mortality surveillance website reports that there have been more than 80,000 pneumonia and influenza deaths in the U.S. during the current 2019-2020 flu season. In 2020 alone, there's been more than 43,000 flu and influenza deaths. And we didn't shut down society, shelter in place. I mean, that's a great point. Um, and and clearly, clearly, it's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, we know it's all bullshit, man. So, yeah. And them hospitals, too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those hospitals that are uh, very, very, very mysteriously empty. You know what I'm saying? They're very, very, very mysteriously empty. So, you know, that's something to think about, man. That's, that's something to... Uh, to spiral up on, man. The Ahab to Victor Mack. I love to Morpheus Jackson. He said, uh, by the way, FEMA was formed today, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Huh? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Love to Morpheus, man. Love to Tehuva Yahuda. He said, so true. All ages have something to bring to the table, man. Oh, of course, man. We all across the spectrum over here, man. Strap Nation. Uh, hoodoo Voodoo. Okay. I'm 27 years old, a Katrina survivor. All of what's going on today is no different from Katrina. I was 13 when Katrina happened. I believe it was getting me ready for this moment of the U.S. and world today. I mean, that's what we're talking about. So you got the same agency. And, you know, we got to check their uh, check their record, man. We got to check the track record. Love to Lily of God. She said, yeah, we are already quarantined. We, we were already quarantined. Yeah, there, there was... They tripping on quarantine. I mean, we was already separated. Let's just say separated. You know, we was already separated. And now they want more social distancing. Now you niggas want social distancing. We've been trying to get our social distance on for a long time. We've been fighting you to get some social distance. We've been fighting you to get social distance. 
Now you want social distancing. Come on, man. Come on, man. Couple more, man. Love to go out live. FEMA trying to get us like Hunger Gang. Straight up, man. 777 Showtime. All praise. Hawa. A ha. Aqua. B W O E T V. Thank you for your works. A ha. Peace. Peace. Salim. I love Jumi. He said Antarctic will be revealed. So I'm looking forward to that, man. It's going to be a lot popping off in this Antarctic situation. <laughs> love to Kenny Ward. Says Tribe Up. Nice work, bro. A ha. Kenny Ward. Gigantis Slayer. Always uh, dropping some drop. A ha. Christopher Poston said maybe time to maybe taking the sick to other sites or getting ready for something else. Hey, man. I don't know. We don't know. But it's not about just sitting there waiting on them to move. You know what I mean? We got to have a we got to have foot to action. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what I'm saying within ourselves, within our our own families, you know, whether it's physical you know what I'm saying? Spiritual, all that, man. So, you know, you keep moving. We keep moving, man. Hey, have to drop nation for these, you know, beautiful comments, man. I'm going to throw something on here, man. Get a little flow going as I make this dismount here into, I'm going to go back into that uh, entomology document. And then, as promised, I got a sundown nine spiral dismount. Shalaka, my bro, nine spiral. Uh, I, got, I got a little into my dismount last time, so... Yeah, I forgot about the double dismount. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was tired too. I said, oh, oh, oh no. It was 30 minutes later. I said, oh, damn. I forgot about my nine spiral dismount. So I'm going to get that nine spiral dismount uh, this time around. That's a big reason for this part two, too. I said, I got to do a part two then. I got to do a part two. So love the nine spiral. We're going to get that dismount, man. Let's you know, let's get on some 432 drive, man. We got some piano drive. Let's get some pianos for all man. Let's see what we got here. You know, always, uh, you know, surf the wave sometime on YouTube. You know, when you look at this 432, I remember when it was uh, not very much 432 on YouTube. And then a few people started, started, uh, you know, 432 hip hop, you know, music, you know what I'm saying? Dropping different tracks. Now you got a gang of them, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm grateful, man, to be part of the flow, man, to uh, spread the vibration awareness. And I know that we had a big part to play, you know what I'm saying? Because none of this stuff was around at first. We had to really search to find some type of, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, spiral flow. And then we had to do it ourselves a lot. But now, you know, you're going to get a lot of 432 flow. Let me see. I don't, I don't want this one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that 432 flow, man. Let's get this. Uh, where my flu at? Where my flu at? Get the healing flu, man. I think we all need a little, a little healing right now. And yeah, all this is uh, definitely, man, uh, not to freak you out when we talk insects <laughs> and different things. You know, it's just more like, you know, when you, when you can see, you know, that this is what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So, if this is what's happening, maybe you can accept the flow that I. I need to be happening that much more. You know, I, I need to be charging up that much more. You know what I'm saying? If you're just seeing it now, it's at least 50 years old, at least. You know what I'm saying? And that means that they can, look, you know how you open the door and a fly goes into your house? Now you don't even know this fly is being literally controlled to spread disease, to spread anything. You know what I'm saying? Or just to, you know. Have, have have a, a camera on you at all time, you know, that type of thing. Oh, what's up, man? What's up? Let's get some of this spirit flu, man. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, you know, a fly go in your house, you know what I mean? This is the point. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's when it gets this real. Then we know it's time, man. It's, it's time to cool my wa. Part machine, part cyborgs. Dragonflies, my naga.
were one of the first attempts at taking a stab at this approach. So I want you to think about this. Dragonflies. Now the dragonfly is what Hawa sent to help wake up the tribe about this 360 perspective. We weren't, we were never talking about dragons until those dragonflies just wouldn't leave me alone, man. Just kept buzzing around, buzzing around my, my little back porch for hours, man. Making the most kind of annoying sound, like just buzzing. And I never really heard of dragonflies being that loud. It was two of them. And they were both circling around, circling around, circling around. Then I looked up, what does it mean, you know, when a dragonfly just, you know, keeps circling around? <laughs> and then we went into this whole dragonfly thing, and the dragonfly led into the dragon. When we researched the mythology behind the dragonflies, that some say that they were at one time dragons, that they used to be dragons and fell under this curse and got stuck in that form. Or they could just be in that form so they don't scare everybody right now, you know. <laughs> uh, but they're hijacking the dragon, man. I mean, not just the dragon fly. That's what I want you to get. They're hijacking the dragon itself. They're tapping into the nervous systems of these little dragons, all right? So dragonflies were one of the first attempt at taking a stab at this approach this past January, R&D company Draper and Howard Hughes Medical Institute launched a partnership aimed at turning dragonflies into miniature drones. So all these dragonflies, my log is that was waking us up, you know what I'm saying? Making us aware, you know, giving us good vibration. You know what I'm saying? They're now trying to hijack that whole approach, right? They're taking their own dragonfly approach. So they want to turn dragonflies into miniature drones this tech advancement referred to as optogenics optogenics like optometry so they want to see they want to see remember the dragon etymology is to see let's type that in optogenics wow Most commonly refers to biological technique that involves the use of light to control neurons that have been genetically modified to express light sensitive ion channels. Let's pull this up. Ion channels. You know, every time they do spraying in the air, they say they're testing the ionosphere. And these optogenics meaning seen, right? And they're tapping into the dragonfly. And I said, what's the etymology of a dragon? What's a seraph, right? Isaiah 6, Hawa got the seraph singing, holy, holy, the seraphim. Oh, the burning one. The flying, lofty, fiery flying serpent. <laughs> so these fi fiery flying serpents are guarding the throne of Hawa, the Seraphim, the dragons, right? But what's the etymology of dragons? Right? Serpent, giant sea fish, like Leviathan. Oh, from Durkastai. To see clearly, I have seen. So these dragons see clearly. The dragonflies have a 360 panorama. They can see fully 360 degrees. They can look right at you as they're flying away. They can see clearly. When you hijack the sight, this is where they're getting their optogenics, meaning seen. 
visible. All that is the dragon to see. I have seen. All right. Okay. Okay. Because they're turning dragonflies into miniature drones. Genetically modified so that the neurons can become light sensitive ion channels. This allows the neurons to be controlled by pulses of light versus electrical stimulus. Next, they develop a tiny backpack, lightweight enough for the dragonflies to carry all the necessary control electronics, as well as integrated guidance and navigation systems that can make the dragonfly drones fully autonomous. Their goal is to make these flying cyborgs carry small payloads, conduct surveillance, and report back with intel data pertaining to the enemy. Now, we are now the domestic enemy locked up in our houses, right? When they put boots on your street, when they call in any National Guard or whoever, it's to enforce what they're doing. Because you say, nigga, you can't lock me in the house. That's what the reinforcements are for. Got to dodge the hijack in these cities. This is their grid. This is their battlefield. This is their setup. They set this up. <laughs> but the more you get out of it, the less control they have over the environment. And they can send their dragonflies everywhere. They can send their robot dogs everywhere. But at least make them work for <laughs> Make them work for Let's go. So this tech advancement is referred to as optogenics, right? We're talking about pulses of light. Optogenics is a neuromodulation method that uses a combination of techniques from optics and genetics to control the activities of individual neurons and living tissue, my naga, just meditate on that. To control the activities of individual neurons and living tissue, even within freely moving animals. In some usages, optogenics also refers to optical monitoring of neural activity and control of biochemical pathways in non-neural cells. Although these research activities proceeded the use of light sensitive ion channels in neurons as optogenetics is used by some authors to refer to only optical control of the activity of genetically defined neurons. So this is what they're now coding so that they could use you like a remote control. And they can, if they can do this with a dragonfly, they can do this with a person. They're already doing it. This means they've already doing it with their clones and all that bullshit. So, genetically defined neurons and not these additional research approaches. The term optogenetics is an example of polysemy. Polysemy. Uh, the capacity for a word or phrase to have multiple meanings. Oh, like the forked tongue. It means two different things like white, right? Optical recording of neuro, neuronal activities can be made with help of the optogenetic sensors for calcium, vesicular release, neurotransmitters, or membrane voltage control of activities restricted to genetically defined neurons and performed in a spatiotemporal specific manner by light. And what did they say over here that they're using the light pulses? This allows these neurons to be controlled by pulses of light. Remember, light is also sound, so they can control it by light or sound, all right, versus electrical stimulus. Next, they develop a tiny backpack, lightweight enough, so now they got the, now they got the payload. Now they got the payload. All 
All right, so you check out that link. Let's just get this here. Let's go. Yeah, let's pick it up from here. You know, go get part one. Go get part one. Now, we talk pestilence and viruses, and you can pretty much start linking the entomological warfare and all these great plagues. You know, you got to factor this into your equation if you're researching this stuff, for real. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're a serious recon, you know what I mean? Go back to the Spanish flu and all that stuff. Go back to these big plagues. Um, connect this with these comets <laughs> and these plagues that will come about from these comets. Where these comets carrying payloads <laughs> of these, you know, etymological, you know, I'm saying, entomological uh, warfare, you know, what I'm saying, type of insects, you know, what I'm saying, you know, what I'm talking about already plagued up, and the insects came around and just jammed everybody up. Again, back to the biblical plague of Egypt. I mean, go back to all these plagues. This has always been insect warfare, <laughs> entomological warfare, and it ain't stopped. And now they can control this shit to a T, you know what I'm saying? They can control it. Hold it right quick. You know, so, you know, it's a lot more to kind of factor into all this stuff. You know I mean, so we got a lot to, uh, you know, just weigh in all this, you know, we're just weighing all these things. Again, not to freak nobody out, just to weigh it, you know what I mean? So we can say, okay, if we connect the dragonflies with part of our awakening, you know, into the Drakon, which connected us really into the script, you know what I mean, even more, because we connected that back with the seraph, right, the seraphim, the burning ones, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't comprehend your dragons, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to comprehend the burning ones, you're, you're not going to be able to see clearly, man, clearly, and there ain't no better time, man, to see clearly than right now, you know what I'm saying, to see the angels, the protection, the seraphim, the fiery, flying, serpent or dragon because we know in alchemy there's an al alchemical serpent and an alchemical dragon so the serpent can't be the dragon if in alchemy there's an alchemical serpent and an alchemical dragon those, those are two different things so the serpent ain't the dragon but the serpent is the fox <laughs> the dog the sign of Sophia. we're gonna get back into that the guayacum balsam so much man fun fun investigation flow we will get our pick series going on with the picks. Uh, man, we got a lot of, uh, got, we got a lot of, you know what I'm saying, water. We got a lot of water, I'll pray so while. Uh, as all this is slowing down, we're speeding up. You know what I'm saying? We're getting more. You know what I mean? So keep tuning in, download the app for show, and uh, we'll keep working behind the scenes to make it, you know what I'm saying, you know, smooth for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just, it's beautiful. Just, just be in a beautiful frequency and watch it happen, man. Watch it all happen, man. Watch it all pop off, man. So the Seraphim, all the lofty. So connecting with Hawa connects us back with our loftiness. Connect, connecting with Hawa connects us right back with the Seraphim, with the lofty. Isaiah chapter 6, right? All right, all right, so let's go. La Hawa. Hold on, man, where's my flute stone? Okay, okay. It's all good. Let's get it like this, man. So what's the new art of war, my naga? What's the new art of war? Entomological war. I mean, just go Google entomological war. All right? And see what you come up with. War history online, insect infantry, bee bombs, scorpion grenades, cyber bugs. Let's check this one out. Oh man. Check two. Okay, so we got our internet back. We good, y'all. So let's keep it going right here. All right, we got bee bombs, scorpion grenades, cyber bugs. Let's get flu. Let's get flu. <laughs> Let 
Hey, man, it takes a lot to get this drop out, man. I said, I got a small window. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's talk cyber bugs, man. We got B bombs, scorpion grenades, cyber bugs. It says if you say army or weapons, most people think of the traditional army, human army, and metal weapons. Few people would actually think of insects as a weapon to be deployed. Not many would consider that a mosquito bite could be anything other than accidental or irritating. My bad, y'all situating here. Or well, that the Colorado potato beetle was sent purposely for a potato field. But in the assumption lie the whole beauty and horror of insects as a biological weapon. Utilizing insects to attack the enemy is referred to as using an entomological weapon. Using insects for military purposes was a method employed in ancient times, but it has grown to a new scale in the 20th century. Despite the gradual decline of entomological weapons, the presence of insects in various wars managed to gain monstrous glory there are three types of entomological warfare the first type involves purposely infecting insects with the pathogen and then releasing them over the entire territory these insects then infect human and animals through bites all right the second type is when insects are used for the destruction of agricultural plants depriving the enemy of food sources so either they gonna come bite you with a disease or take away your food source, all right? The third type of entomological weapon involves the use of non-infected insects such as wasps or bees for a direct attack on opponents. So they're not infected, but they do a direct attack. <laughs> so that could be anything. It could be laser beams, man. You know what I mean? All right. Lockwood, uh, Jeffrey Lockwood, in his book, Six-Legged Soldiers, suggested that the earliest incident of entomological warfare was the use of bees by ancient people in order to force the enemy out in open. Nests of bees were thrown into shelters or caves. Furthermore, Lockwood suggests that the Ark of the Covenant could have been dangerous because it contained deadly flies or deadly fleas. Then you got the Europe situation, right? The Black Plague. There's a story that one of the first uses of entomological weapons was the plague epidemic of the 14th century in Asia Minor. The consequence of this epidemic are known as the Black Death, which led to a demise of 30 to 60 percent of the population of Europe. Oh, that's the 1300s. And then they came here in the 1400s with that weapon, right? Is it play play? They came here and directed that weapon all on the Naga. Right. Many historians think that the Black Death probably came to Europe because of a biological attack using fleas. They were carriers of plague from the Crimea city of Kaffa. All right. So you got some more of this drive. You can check it out. You know, so, you know, this this, this been going down. This been happening. Was that Roman beehive? It's all been happening, man. All right, all right. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, man. Hi, Jack Free. Hi, Jack Free. <laughs> and then uh, we will, you know, touch a little more on this uh, 5G and Beyond Act 2020. Dig on that some more. And get a little more piece of this uh, martial law situation again. Not to, you know, you know, make you jumpy, you know what I'm saying? But to really, you know, get the the preparedness, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, ignoring shit ain't the solution either, even though you might feel braver. You might say, okay, I'm just going, you know, I ain't even going to think about it, you know, and <laughs> that's cool. Um, but if Joshua took that approach against the Canaanites, I don't think, you know, he would get very far. He had to actually 
move. He had to actually think about strategy. He actually had, he had to flow. So Hawaii expects us to flow, right? We can't be stagnant. I can't move because of money. And then, you know, that's money is our God now, right? I can't move because of money. What are we going to do? You know what I mean? All this stuff, you know, we, we depend very little on Hawaii, you know what I mean? To, to guide our path these days. And I understand. I understand. I understand because I got a family too. So, you know, it's step by step with us, man. It's, it's, it's a flow with us. It's nothing drastic, dramatic, but we definitely like to be aware, aware. We're not to be overly aware, but we can be aware. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna get this last piece on, uh, entomology. We're gonna do a triple dismount. Make sure we get that nine spiral. Let's go. So we got here last time that they are now controlling. Scientists can now control both guidance and navigation systems of insects outside of the laboratory setting. So they can go out in the world and these dragonflies, right? Because they're working with the, the nervous system of the dragonflies. Because they want to control the flight of a dragonfly, right? Pull up all these links so you got to drop. All right. So we got into that. We went into etymology, back to entomology. I mean, then we went to optogenics. You remember the study? You know, making seem visible. So it's all about seeing clearly. It's all about the dragon, right? They're hijacking the nervous system of the dragon. They want to see clearly. Optogenics refers to the biological technique that involves the use of light to control the neurons that have been genetically modified to express light-sensitive ion channels. I mean, you make sense of it. Just know that they're using light. <laughs> they're using light to control the neurons, man. They're 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 coding this stuff. They're they're recoding because everything's light anyway. So they're just you know doing some restructuring, right? Then they're switching the genes around, genomes around, and having all this you know, kind of creating their own grid and pattern with this light situation. So using that, now they get the neuron control, but they also are tapping into the nervous system itself. They're also tapping into the nervous system itself, man. Let's go. Nefarious states could feel enticed to employ insects because they have every chance of obtaining their objectives and little chance of getting caught. Who's going to catch you with this shit? Who's going to who's going to catch one of these beetles and dissect it and say it came from this laboratory in Massachusetts? What what cop is what what cop is trained up to to get to the bottom of this, you know what I'm saying? What what agent on the street <laughs> is going to be catching insects and dissecting them? So yeah, there's very little chance of getting caught, and you can obtain your objective, which is what the poison, the genocide. Critics wary of whether entomological warfare is, is truly a rising threat is truly a rising threat might argue that using insects as wmds is foolish for two reasons it would be unlikely for entomological attack to achieve wmd effects <laughs> but watch how they refute that second the entomological attack would violate international treaties and norms they don't care about no treaties they make new treaties and as far as them not having weapons of mass destruction effects how did they respond New technologies and capabilities, including the ability to edit the genome of insects and to drive certain genes, because now they can control it, they can drive it, enable biological nightmare scenarios that far surpass any of the biological weapons seen to date. You don't know what these things are capable of. They surpass any of your biological weapons that you've ever seen. Once these things are charged up, they create nightmare scenarios. So don't tell us, don't tell us that this is not going to be effective. Let's go. 
Locust swarms and bubonic plague are not necessarily relics of biblical and medieval times. In the wrong hands, the locusts and the flea could reemerge to cause death and destruction. Again, it's all about biblical times. So they're trying to copy the creator by controlling insects for death purposes and plague purposes, because that's what the creator did to them. <laughs> Nefarious actors can now employ pesticide-resistant insects weaponized with a pox virus here we go so they're weaponized with the virus or another engineered disease with no cure yet in existence gene drives amplify the effect of such an entomological attack ensuring 100 percent of the insects offspring retain the state selected trait as they multiply these entomological delivery vehicles of wmds would not only be hard to kill, they could create a pandemic that would confound scientists and law enforcement officials. So you got a lot more to dig on. You got a lot more to dig on. We got a lot more to dig on. We got a lot more to dig on. You know, we'll kick it back here for a second. Pull up this link again. The bibliothecaplades.net. All right. We went through some of uh, FEMA's black path towards martial law. And the main thing to remember is that during a national emergency, the president will be stripped of all presidential function, my nugget. So who's in control once they declare national emergency? It ain't the president. It's the director of FEMA. And on behalf of the president, <laughs> he has the treasury. He got all the executive branch, you know, movement. He, he got everything mobilized, national security, everything, right? He got Department of Justice. He got, uh, he got the, look, man, look, man. Number 10, have the Department of Interior take over all water, potable water, place all food production under Department of Agriculture. So everything's being shifted, the food, the water. Everything is now, he got narcotics. Everything is now under the director of FEMA, my nugget. So he must have had to drop the whole time. If this is a, if this has been the plan the whole time, then he must have had to drop the whole time. If this has been the plan the whole time, he must have had to drop the whole time. That's all I'm saying. It's a good drop, you know, just to go over on your own executive orders has never been defined by Congress, has never been defined like what's an executive order, you know, has never been defined by Congress. Under the Constitution of the United States, the president is vested with the executive power of the government, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 1, the power to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 7, and the power to see that the laws are faithfully executed, Article 2, Section 3. From these powers is implemented the authority to issue executive orders, EOs. But an ex executive order has never been defined by Congress. So what is it? In use from the earliest days of the Republic, <laughs> the executive order was at first employed mainly for the disposition of public domain, the withdrawal of lands from federal reservations and for similar purposes. During World War I, the use of executive order was widened as executive authority and power increased. In the early years, executive orders were not numbered, and since there was no uniform system for recording them, the total of unnumbered orders is unknown. The validity of executive orders has been questioned many times, but a ruling as to the extent or limit to which they may be used has never been determined by the courts or Congress. The Federal Register contains the text or derivatives issued under the authority of the president. No congressional authority is required. There is no review by the judiciary. All executive orders are laws made by one man, the president of the United States. Through executive existing executive orders, it is possible for one man to ignore the Constitution, Congress, and the will of the people. A complete dictatorship can be imposed under color of law on the American people we already know that's been going down and not just the American people, but on the, on their moral cons, you dig on their moral cons, man. 
You know, you got a list right here of uh, executive orders, man, that you can look into. All these orders were under President Nixon. All right. And they allow for all kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. And we'll get this one for the dismount on this uh, link right here. Finally, President Ronald Reagan updated this executive order in his last year, full year in office, November 18th, 1988, leaving his successor, Bush, the tools to create a dictatorship in his new world order. Then came up to the top, then came up to the top of the top, the executive order 11051. So look up executive order 11051. The director of the Office of Emergency Planning authorizes to put executive orders into effect in times of increased international tension. So the 11051 says everything's in play. 11051 says it's all happening. Because this order now puts into effect, it's put into effect in times of increased international tension. I think we're in that time. Or financial crisis. I think we're in that time. He is also to perform such additional functions as the president may direct. The director is not specified, a specified civilian or elected may concern anybody, even a close political friend. Times of increased international tension or financial crisis may be related to absolutely anything outside of the continental United States, like a major crisis in the Middle East or Yugoslavia or even Russia or a virus, my naga. May also concern a crash suddenly by a sudden coup in Russia. Finally, has been created, has been created the most unknown HR 4079. So look up HR 4079. 48 of your tax paid congressmen sponsored the news speak named National Drug and Crime Emergency Emergency Act, right? Emergency, which could cost you more than 30 trillion and imprison 30 million Americans. And who's in them prisons, right? So who's it, who's the target again? Here's what the Constitution scudding measure could do. So this HR 4079 can declare a five year emergency opposing martial law right imposing tests for drug and alcohol use so they can start forcing stuff on you right forcing you know forcing the vaccine stuff like that authorized mass expulsion of drug and alcohol users from public and private schools and college and fire any workers using drugs accelerate conversation confiscation of cars boats planes and other property of casual drug users set much high mandatory sentences for drug and alcohol users previous maximum sentences if you know anything about the mandatories, you know what I'm saying? They already are way, you know, I mean, to say unfair wouldn't even, you know, it's it's a complete, it's a complete sham, man. You know, it's 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 heartbreaking. All the brothers, man, that's getting caught in these mandatory sentences. I mean, um, reopen World War II, our Japanese relocation centers, concentration camps, active military bases as prisons to re-educate Americans, create a new private prison system. I mean, all this seems to be already coming into effect in effect suspend the fourth article and amendment the bill of rights to our constitution which prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures and the eighth article and amendment which prohibits executive fines bail or punishment police would have legal right to break into any home without a search warrant arrest a person and hold him without charge indefinitely in effect legalize slave labor by amending pre present laws that restrict purchase of goods and services by prisoners so yeah pretty much you know worst case scenario you know what i mean all your laws and all that stuff you know all the well we don't have no laws protecting us we know that except the creator so all we can depend on right now is the creator all we go back to is the creator you know but that doesn't mean do nothing it means you know do as the creator has has gave has given us a blueprint to do you know tribe up assemble yourselves you know what i mean start start building and we will be building Choose Up Village. Love to the tribe. Halahua. Hit us up. Choose up at 432thedrop.com. You know what I mean? To to know more, learn more, or give any assistance. We appreciate you. Halahua. So FEMA is an acronym for Federal Emergency Management Agency. It is established under Executive Orders 12148 and signed 
into existence by Jimmy Carter, 1979. Originally planned as an umbrella administration consisting of a disaster emergency response arms of nearly a dozen scattered federal agencies. So all these agencies form a super knocker, right? <laughs> and here they are with this under this banner, you know what I'm saying? And that's why the leader of that particular banner, you know, is really the, the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? If he ain't the motherfucker, he's one of the motherfuckers, motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Behind the veil. Can you dig it? All right. And that led into HR 2881, which, of course, is talking about back to that 5G grid, right? We saw how everything's gridded up. The bill requires the president in consultation with the federal agency. So now who's in control? Who got the president to power, right? To develop a strategy to secure and protect this 5G. So now they can secure and protect 5G by any means necessary. Assist mutual defense treaty allies. Treaty allies? What that got to do with 5G? What are these treaties and this defense allies got to do with me getting faster internet? Nothing, right? So we know that stuff's a sham. We know it's that belong. I'm going to see if we can get some more of this here. Let's pull it up. You know, just uh, seeing what the mainstream talking about. Let's check out C-SPAN. Let's see what they say. It's good to check in with them, right? <laughs> so here's some actions regarding this 5G, right? So, and beyond act. Received in Senate, read twice, placed on Senate legislative calendar. I. Right. Motion, 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 considered as unfinished business. Let's see, is that all they say? Okay, so bang, bang, bang. Passed Senate March 4th, 2020. We were talking about the 5G and Beyond Act, right? On passage passed without objection. So if not the full act, at least part of the act has already been passed, right? To secure this network so no one can fuck with it. No one can start knocking them down, right? <laughs> Supposedly, right? Supposedly, man. All right, man. All right, man. And again, you know, this could be something, it could be nothing, man. I, I don't know the validity, man, and none of us really know what's going on behind the scenes. But, you know what I mean, uh, I'll, I'll leave this for you again. If you can't pull it up, you know, hit me up. I'll, I'll leave the link so you can look at this this case. And it involves everything sick and sinister you can think of, you know. We will get back on that organ, melanin harvesting and stuff. Get back in the melanin flow and know that you are the most expensive thing on the plane. So what's really going down? You see all these names listed and I can't confirm and I can't deny. I don't know. But you can have that link, man. Hey, how to everybody sending me these great links. Shout out wild, man, to the real ones. You know what I'm saying? Everything we're doing, man, you know what I mean? It's, it's right, right in the flow. You know what I mean? So our thoughts got to be in the flow. Our frequency got to continue to be in the flow. You know what I mean? And like I said, man, like I said, let's get this great nine spiral dismount. Like this and like that. Hey, hot to the bro nine spiral, man. I mean, the bro's fully dedicated to giving you everything you need. Everything you need, man, to break the spell. You know what I mean? This is a spell breaker. You know, don't don't come here unless you're ready for the spell breaker, man. So go over there on IG, check them out. Check out all the drop. This is what we was talking about. Well, first of all, <laughs> this is why they got to protect this 5G, right? 
Cause everybody waking up across the plane like, nah, man. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me turn it down. Cause I, you know, I want YouTube to say, oh, use this music, this music, do to do. But yeah, you see these towers falling, man. This is why they say, oh, we might have to protect this. Now we know it's deeper than this, though. We know it's deeper than that. But these things is falling like dominoes over here. <laughs> these things falling like dominoes, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, my busy, my busy. Got too excited. I got too excited. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the fam. Shout out to the fam. We got brothers and sisters, man, in the military. And, you know, they, they doing what they, you know, feel is best for their future and stuff like that. None of them is really down with this system like that, but they just are caught up, you know what I mean? So, you know, we're all praying for all our family in all these places because we know Hawaii put us in all these places for a reason, man. So, la Hawaii. Yeah, man. This is these 5G towers or these Gwen towers. different antenna here. There's actually a couple tiers of antennas. Just imagine what's going on here. You know, wow. imagine the radiation that this thing's giving off. Look at all these different antennas. I mean, this thing is so top heavy. It's either going to catch on fire or fall down. But these towers there's extremely low frequencies, which create radiation, which cause cancer. Man. Now, these hospitals, people have been showing up. You know, I think this is uh, St. John's. And you're supposed to be in an epidemic, a health epidemic. You would think the hospitals are just overloaded, but they're all empty, empty, empty. Now, either they're taking every, everybody someplace already. Maybe they've rounded everybody up in the middle of the night. But... If you just show up at a hospital, you still should have new people coming in. I mean, it's an epidemic, right? It's an epidemic. But there ain't nobody. Nobody, Jack. In Denver, and it seems pretty chill. Not a lot going on down here. It doesn't seem too busy. Um, yeah, pretty empty. Nothing going on. Hashtag film my hospital. This is St. Joseph's Hospital. Park lot is empty. I went inside of St. Joseph's and I went in several different waiting rooms and there was no more than one person in each waiting room that I went into. Um, the emergency over there is slow as can be. And again, I'm filming from far away just because I don't want to get in trouble with the tip laws or anything like that. But the emergency side there, um, as you can see, the parking lot is practically empty, mostly just nurses. Um, and every nurse I've talked to has told me that they're extremely slow and that there's not much going on. So I don't know what the media is talking about. Film your hospital, show the media lying. This is Dream Industry Hospital. It's like a ghost town in the hospital. This corridor is usually a hospital in Denver. And it's like a ghost town in the hospital. This corridor is usually rampant with people. Look at this. All the way back down to the casualty. But when are you told when were you told the fatality happened? Because the man that was the homeless man that you we are told that just died. We've just seen the police take him away to the hospital. I'm filming this now. There's a lot of stuff going down, man. So y'all check out Sundown Nine, man, and you know, I think they have one on uh one of the hospitals out here, man. Cedar. Cedar Sinai, man, this might be it. Emergency ambulance entrance. And once again, dead. Nothing going on. Something's going on, folks. And it ain't a virus. <laughs> Sunday. I, I see these health workers walking in and out with no masks on. Something just don't add up, man. All right, we are at Cedar Sinai, as you can see, one of the biggest hospitals in Los Angeles. Emergency room. Make it right. 
folks. This is in the heart of Los Angeles, West Hollywood, meeting, getting closer to the west side. And supposedly Los Angeles is one of the biggest hit cities. Hmm. The news is telling us. Here is the entrance. My people, does this shit make any sense? Does it make sense to be in the largest global health pandemic? All these body bags, all these death counts. Anybody that dies is associated with the Roni. What the comments say, my bro said, man, tens of thousands of people died of this influenza pneumonia anyway. That's not the corona. But no one's all covered up and, and, and you know, in a turtle shell for that. But for this Roni, though, it's supposed to be so big. We're locked in our houses. We can't go to our jobs or we can't go to the movies. We can't watch sports. We can't do none of this stuff, which is a good thing <laughs> in a sense. I mean, we can all see the good in it, right? But I'm just saying you're being forced to be shut down, shut off. And shouldn't it be an epidemic? Shouldn't it be just what? What do you picture in your mind when I say global health pandemic? And I give you, I say visualize a hospital during a global health pandemic. That means niggas going crazy, body bag, dropping out everywhere. You know what I mean? How would the hospitals in your community supposed to be looking? Something like this? To the emergency room. As you can see, no lines, nothing. Just Nobody? Guards. Nobody? Because everybody's afraid, so, so afraid of getting sick. They're staying in. Even if they're sick, they're staying at home. Even if they're kind of sick, they're staying at home. They got no patients. What happened to the patients? So it's a lot popping, man. It's a lot popping, man. And all we're trying to say is stay woke, man, and stay focused, man. And shout out to the real one, my bro, yo, bro, Sundown Nine Spiral. We're surfing the wave. You know what I mean? Definitely going to get more, you know, at some point about this entomology situation because they spreading viruses. These are weaponized insects and it goes way 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 back 30 to the 30s i mean really 80 90 years at least and then of course you can go to the biblical times and all this is all happening man so when you talk 5g and you talk this roni and the spread of it these this these viruses have always been connected to this entomological situation and it's just a great find i want to share with y'all y'all keep surfing the wave man pow wow to the tribe man let's keep tribing up Holla at me, a hop to the real ones. Allah, wow.